Microsoft Loop is here, at least in public preview. In this video, we're going to talk about what Loop is, going to look at how to access it, how to get it set up in your tenant if you want to use it in a business environment, and take a quick look at some of the features that have been surfaced in this public preview today. So first of all, what is Loop? Well, Loop is both a, an app and a technology within Microsoft 365. And the Loop app lets you organize workspaces, pages, and components that are parts of your work. Inside a workspace, you can bring in content that you have elsewhere in Microsoft 365. You can communicate about it with collaborators, and you can even access Microsoft 365 Copilot to help you with your ideas. And then your components from Loop can be surfaced elsewhere in your documents, in your emails, in your messages across Microsoft 365. They always show you the latest information and when you change something there, it always ends up back in your Loop app. You simply can forget about which app you're using and just experience doing the job that you need to do wherever it needs to get done. So the new Loop app has been released today in public preview. So anyone can get in and preview it. But depending on whether you're using a personal account or a Microsoft 365 work or school account, the way that you approach this will be slightly different. So let's head over to loop.microsoft.com. And you can see here we're at the Loop homepage and I can sign in. Now, if I'm gonna sign in using a Microsoft account or a personal Microsoft 365 instance, it's just gonna let me straight in. But here, I'm using a, uh, an account in my business tenants. So I'm gonna sign in and you can see I get this message. The Loop app is not enabled in your organization. So if you're just a basic user, there's nothing that you can do about this. You need to either use a Microsoft account to try out Loop, or you need to talk with an administrator for your Microsoft 365 tenant to get in there. Assuming you're an administrator, let's take a look at what you need to do to get this set up and working in your environment. So here I am in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and I'm gonna jump down to Teams and Groups, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go into Active Teams and Groups, and I'm gonna head over to Security, and I'm gonna create a new security group. You can see that I've already done one here for Loop users, but I'll create a second one just to take you through the process. So I create this new group, I'm gonna make it a security group, click Next. We'll call it Loop Users 2. We'll just click Next, and then we'll create the group, and close. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump into that Loop Users 2 group. And we're gonna add some members to it. So let's just go ahead and add uh, the user that I was using before was Adele. So I'll go ahead and add her in here. So I just add her to this group. And the group that you create is the users that you want to be able to use Loop. So now that we've got that group set up, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on show all and we're gonna head down to all admin centers and then we're gonna to go to the office configuration admin center. And you can access this directly just by going to config.office.com. And what you wanna do is create a Microsoft 365 cloud policy. So let's click on go to Microsoft 365 cloud policy. You can see I've already got one here, but I'll take you through the process again. I'm gonna create, I'm gonna call it Demo Loop Policy. Click Next, I'm gonna add my group. And now I've got my new group added into this policy as its scope. I'm gonna click Next and I'm gonna grab the, um, the policies that are related to Loop. So I can just search over here for Loop. And for each of these, I'm going to select Enabled. So what this does is it allows me to use loop, it allows me to use loop files in loop, and it allows me to use loop files in Outlook. So I've now configured all of those, I'm gonna click Next, and I'm gonna click Create. And now I have my new policy in there. It does take about an hour 
or so from creating the policy to it propagating across your environment. So you can't, certainly can't do this and just jump straight back into Loop. But I set up my original policy about an hour ago, so let's jump into Loop and take a look. So here I am with another user that I've already assigned to a Loop policy, so I'm gonna sign in. And you can see immediately this loads with this Loop welcome experience. So I'm in a welcome workspace right now. If I want to create a new workspace, I can just come up to my loop icon on the left here and create a new workspace. So I'm just going to create one called Demo. So the first thing you'll notice is this looks very much like OneNote. Um, and in terms of functionality, just in terms of what you can get on a page, it is very much like OneNote. Uh, but the loop elements that you see on these pages work quite differently um, to what you'll be familiar with if you're already in OneNote. So the first thing that I want to do here is that I can add additional people to my workspace. So I'm going to come over to here under my demo name of my workspace. I'm going to click on this one member and I'm going to add someone else in here. So let me just add my primary account on this tenant. I'm going to invite myself. And what that does is it gives that person access to everything that's in this workspace. You'll notice I also have a share uh, button up here. And what this does is to share the current page that I'm on or a loop component um, related to that page. So just be aware that if you want to share the whole thing, if you want people in your kind of workspace team, you need to do that over here. Whereas if you want to share the content that's just in front of you, you can do that over here. So the other thing that you can do, you can type, you can add, um, you can add any elements you want. But if you want to see what elements you can add, um, you're just going to type slash. And you can see we've got these different elements that we can create. So I'm going to create a progress tracker. Okay, so there we go. We've created a progress tracker. And the next thing I want to do is to share this progress tracker. So if I just add a bit of content around it, let's just add a title. And I'm going to add a little bit of text down here. Maybe I'll add another title. So now that I've got a bit more content on this page, I'm going to take a look at what is special about this content that I've got in Loop. So if I just highlight this table a little bit, I want to find these three dots that are the top left corner of the table. And it can be a little bit kind of, just from a UI perspective, difficult to get that. But once I've got these little dots at the top left corner of my table, I'm going to go ahead and click on them and I'm going to use Create Loop Component. And you can see that all of this is now sitting in this box which says Loop Component. I'm then going to go ahead, I'm going to copy this component. So here I am in Teams and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this link into my Teams chat. And you can see immediately this component syncs into my team. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to Miriam. And now jumping over to Miriam's Teams, you can see the component that Pravdeep just sent. So I'm going to go ahead and change something here. So I'm going to say that this is actually in progress. And I'm going to say waiting on blocker three here as my update. I've jumped back to Pravdeep's Teams and you can see that this has been updated by Miriam, but I'm also gonna jump back into Loop. And you can see that this has been updated by Miriam here. So everywhere that you put this component, it's going to update, it's going to keep it live. So this is the beauty of Loop, that you don't have to have the people you're, you're collaborating with doing it in the Loop app. You can create one of these components and you can move these components around in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem and they can be updated from where people are working. Let's take another example. Let's create a voting table. So I've just created this basic table with two ideas on it and I'm going to go ahead and create this as a loop component. I'm going to copy this and this time I'm going to jump into my email. So here I'm creating a new email and I'm going to send it to a couple of other users. 
and I'm going to go ahead and paste my loop component into here. And you can see immediately this has appeared and synced. So let's go ahead and send this. Now in Miriam's email, I've received this email. The loop component loads. I'm going to click and I'm going to vote. And in Megan's email, I can see that Miriam has voted here. So I'm going to go ahead and add my vote here. And here I am as Praddy back in my loop workspace. And I'm going to hover over here and I can see that both Miriam and Megan have voted here. When you create a new page in loop, it does give you the option of using different templates. So for example, if you want to create a new project brief, you can use a template. It creates a template for you. So it really helps you to create these items, to surface them to the right people, to share them, to give you options to share. So within this project brief template, let's just take a look at another example. So I'm going to uh, take this overview and goals section, and I'm gonna create a component from that. I'm gonna jump over to Teams, and just as I did before, I'm gonna post in the component. So let's send this over to Miriam. And back in Miriam's team, you can see that all of this content is here. But I could add to it. And I have the ability to edit this in rich text. And you can see that if I jump back into Pradeep's view of this, that edit that Miriam made is there immediately. Now, there are certainly some limitations with this at this point. For example, one of the things that I tried in the last couple of hours was taking a loop component and pasting it into Word. And you could do this and you could use the loop component in Word. But then what I found was if I tried to, for example, print my document, I wasn't able to see the text that was inside the loop component when I was going to go ahead and print that document. So there are certainly some limitations with this that you can carry those loop components around to these different applications, but the experience that you might have out of having those loop components in your documents may vary um, a little bit depending on what you're trying to do. So this is still a preview product. We've got to play around a little bit with loop components before, but we certainly haven't been able to create them and manipulate them to the degree that we can in the loop app. So I'm sure these experience will improve. What's important here is that for the second week in the row, Microsoft has released something that fundamentally is going to change how we work. There's always this question of, can you communicate with someone in Teams? Can you communicate with someone in Outlook? What platform do they use for different things? And hopefully Loop starts to get around that. You can send what you need to people and get the work done where they work. And I think that's the most important thing that is underlying all of the development that Microsoft is doing within Microsoft 365 right now. They are trying to get you to be able to maximize your productivity where you are at as opposed to having to move between lots of different products. And I think this is starting to make Microsoft 365 and this whole range of products, which is too big for anyone to get their mind around, it's starting to make that make a little more sense for the average user. Because if suddenly you can get a loop component with a list, you can get a loop component with an image, you can get a loop component with text, and you can stick them wherever you want them in Microsoft 365, this is a completely new way uh, of operating operating as a business user. So I'm very excited about this, almost as excited as I was about Copilot last week. Um, and certainly I will continue to use this and see how this develops through the preview period and as this comes out to general release. Um, have a go with it, try it out. If you can't use it within your organizational account, set up a Microsoft account and try it there, as I really think that what you learn there about how this works may represent how software like Microsoft Office is going to work in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this, and until next time, bye-bye.